And if an established professor does not want to do research transparently, then it is they, not the junior researchers, who should be forced to leave academia. Science requires transparency. Though transparency levels in academia have recently slightly increased, they are still way too low given one, the unprecedented high stakes and hypercompetition in academia, and two, growing evidence that many, if not most, published findings do not pass basic scientific checks like replication. So why are transparency reforms in academia progressing at such a glacial pace? Dozens of reasons play a part, as we'll cover, but an underappreciated factor, in my humble opinion, is the strange career advice that established professors are giving out to junior researchers like the following. If the academic culture can't catch up with you, go elsewhere with your skills and principles. You'll be happier and you'll have a more positive impact on the world. Really? By if the academic culture can't catch up, he means senior researchers who continue to party like it's 1994, not doing their research transparently. We know this because junior researchers unambiguously want transparency. Hence, he's basically telling grad students, if your professor doesn't want to be transparent and do real research, then leave academia so that your integrity principles can be useful elsewhere. And what about this advice, delivered in a speech at an elite university by another prominent researcher? However, in my discussions with junior researchers, I also try not to sugarcoat the fact that some of the remedies we advocate are likely to make them less competitive on the job market in the short term. Wait, what? Doing science correctly will make a grad student less competitive for a professorship position? Really? He continues. Given this, why should a junior researcher even bother? I have two answers. The first is that once the field catches up, and I am certain it will, then you will be viewed as one of the pioneers. Notice this expression, field catching up, being used again, which less charitably can be taken to mean senior researchers too intellectually bankrupt to bother doing science correctly. He continues, many of us are fortunate enough to be in that position of freedom and it's our responsibility to do everything we can to advance the careers of junior researchers who are focused on scientific integrity. To do everything we can? Really? Is this prominent researcher really doing everything he can? As a rogue vision science researcher points out, however, everything we can turns out to be not much at all. For example, why doesn't he publicly challenge corrupt senior researchers who aren't yet focused on scientific integrity. Perhaps they don't want to jeopardize their existing friendships with such corrupt senior researchers. Or perhaps the old guard is protecting an industry of fragile findings which they fear will not survive closer scrutiny. Or perhaps they simply don't want to slow down their academic factory productivity. Maybe I'm just being because I like being productive. Either way, it doesn't matter. This kind of bad advice, mixed messages, and insufficiently strong positions on transparency must stop immediately. In conclusion, a minimum level of transparency is simply required in science. Minimum transparency ensures one is accountable to oneself, to one's colleagues, and to the public taxpayer who is most often paying for the research. Junior researchers who want to do transparent, proper research represent our best hope for the future for a strong and healthy science. And if an established professor does not want to do research transparently, then it is they, not the junior researchers, who should be forced to leave academia.